Yes, welcome, folks. Uh, yeah, give me a second, folks. Color correction kicking in. We got the brickworks. Beautiful brickworks. We're here for the Idol No More Toronto. Um, Earth Day celebrations and uh, yar. I'm just setting up the laptop here so give me a second and we will be on our way. My name is Dee Shanger. I'm a mod and live stream director here at Occupy Toronto since day one 18 months ago. Yes, check one, two, check, check, check. Yeah, sorry in advance for some of the wind noise. But here we go. We're going to have a very nice, amongst other things, water ceremony. Yeah. Yar. Of course. Yar. So the barrack thing is on Wednesday, right? Barrack thing. Of course. Tell people about that. Sure. Well, um, once a year we have this incredible opportunity that happens in Toronto because the board of directors of the world's largest gold mining company Headquartered meet, here in Toronto. Headquartered here in Toronto. Uh, they meet in downtown Toronto. And so for the past six years I've been organizing a protest outside, sending delegates inside, and really trying to um, create awareness and also like communicate the fact that like people, normal people the non suit wearing types, even lots of the suit wearing types, really don't approve of what Barrick's doing around the world. So, this is a company that's well known for manipulating policy, um, you know, around the world and has like basically acts so aggressively and so arrogantly that they've inspired huge social movements against them. Um, they're also a company that's known for. Um, you know, corruption and abuse. It's no surprise that George Bush Sr. was the chairman of their advisory board. Um, also, Gustavo Cisneros will likely be at the meeting. And he is one of the lead architects in the coup against Hugo Chavez. Um, Brian Mulroney is also on his board of directors. He will also Nasty. very likely, uh, you know, 90% likely be at this meeting. This is a nasty so, corporation. Yeah, it's a nasty, nasty, nasty corporation. It mines gold. So the, the entire purpose of this corporation is of extremely questionable social value. Um, yeah. You know, gold is something that we never really consume. We just perpetually recycle. And so we have enough already dug up that we don't need to mine this stuff anymore. Yeah. And we're mining at a rate of one part per million um, gold per waste product. And that waste is largely toxic. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's... And not that they clean it up. They oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, wake. each each mine is a guaranteed disaster. You know, I'm doing yeah. a lot of organizing around Line 9, uh, which is a huge problem because, you know, the tar sands are a guaranteed disaster. And, you know, Line 9, you know, it will spill eventually. We don't know where. Um, but it does present an environmental threat to the area. But more because it's a probable threat. Um, so this runs that we, we will be covering threat. this. And it starts at what time? It starts, um, well, I'm asking people to gather at 9.30 a.m., which Where? means we'll start the program at 255 Front Street um, in the Toronto Metro Convention Center. Which um, entrance? Uh, the north entrance. Okay. So 255 Front. Um, we're going to be in Simcoe Park. And what happens is... Right across the street. Yeah. We um, gather. We let them know we're here. Um you know, we have very colorful, we're having a 12 foot high Peter Monk Nokio, which is what I'm calling the Peter Monk puppet with a huge Pinocchio nose. And, um, you know, we're going to have huge banners and, you know, really make a lively setting, you know, nice. Rhythms of Resistance, which is a great um, kind of protest marching band, we'll is it. going to be there. The live stream, of course, is going to be there. And yeah. I think it's going to be simulcast on Occupy Wall Street, actually. Um, yeah. 
because yeah. I've been working with an OWSer that's actually now based in the Dominican Republic. Nice. And he's all about making that happen. Um, yeah, no, they have a lot of mods that aren't centralized in New York. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're constantly mirrored. We were mirrored last night from my show. Cool. By a global rev. Cool. Their mothership. Yeah, we, we always work with them. That's great. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, Tuesday night we're having another event um, talking about CETA and how CETA is now um, a, the official wing of Canadian imperialism. And um, remind it's the been, world audience what CETA is? Sure. It's uh, the Canadian International Development um, Agency. Agency. Yeah. And... An arm of the federal government. It actually has been subsumed under the Department of Foreign Affairs now. So CETA, as we know it, no longer exists and Ooh. is instead um, further so aligned much good over the with years. Canadian foreign interests. And so, I mean, it used to be this kind of, you know, almost like conspiratorial critique that people had of aid um, that it was really advancing the interests of Canada or of the host country around the world. You know, many times aid dollars would go towards building a dam using, you know, the host country's contractors and things like that. So, you know, strings attached, you know, the money that would come right back um, the University towards Law the host connection. country. Um, but now it's not even like a secret anymore. They're not even trying to hide the fact that, um, Aid is is not a benevolent thing. It's not an altruistic thing. It is for the purpose of advancing interests. No, no, keep going. Keep going. I'm just. Oh. No, keep, keep so talking. So we're we're uh sorry, I get thrown off in the thing. I thought you were getting bored with me. No, 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 but no. We are no. in a very beautiful no, setting, you, so it's easy to get distracted. It's no, no, but you you know I like to pan away, and you still have your audio. Yeah. Just uh, no, keep talking. Well. Because uh, we're here at Earth Day here at. We're here at Earth Day, so I'm here to remind people that. Um, you know, Earth, Earth Day is about yourself, um, living in harmony with uh, nature, you know, live according to natural law, take only what you need. Mm -hmm. um, but in this context, in this modern day context, it's also about resisting. Mm -hmm. Just like the law of opposites of creation, which we learn from the natural world, this uh, law of opposites tells us that we have to observe that same and our sacred items, are, a lot of our sacred items are made up of male-female energies. But when we come together like we are today here in a circle, then our sacred items are put together, the male-female are put together together like this in that holistic way. So they represent a grandmother, this eagle staff will represent a grandmother, grandfather energy for all of us. Is it okay that you guys are being filmed now? Or? Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. This is D. Hi, hi, hi D. Hi, D. Hi. Okay. Yeah, so this Thank is, um, uh, I'm going to let Mary Lou explain the, uh, the skirt because the shaft came from, uh, from an Oneida man by the name of Glenn McDougal who mm -hmm. gave it to us. Uh, we used to run a an arts elders gathering in London called the Gathering of the Good Minds. And we ran it for 2001, 3, 5, and 7 for four years, for a four year run. And during the second year, the second time we ran, 2003, he presented us with this staff. And he said that he wants our, our gathering needs a flag. And this is the first flag of Turtle Island. This is the flag that precedes all other flags. So we recognize that the Eagle Staff is our helper of ceremonies. So it's the one who leads the way. And this Eagle Staff has three names that we've given it. Uh, the first name is Oshka Bewis, or Oshka Bewis Kwe, meaning uh, helper of ceremonies in the Ojibwe language. It's also, we also say in the Cree language, Oskapio, Oskapio, helper of ceremonies. And in my language, the Seneca language, we say Sagawandata. Sagawandata meaning helper of ceremonies. So this is a helper of ceremonies in that it's always present whenever we have our ceremonies, our sunrise, our sweat lodge, our uh, fasting ceremonies, our uh, tied hand ceremony, our sundance ceremonies. This flag will always be there to help us because it represents the grandmothers and grandfathers coming together to oversee the ceremony and help to uh, repel any negative uh, energy distractions and it welcomes in the uh, the good 
the, the, the positive the positive uh, intentions, good intentions that we want to bring into the ceremony. So we're going to uh, continue to address this, and I'll let Mary Lou explain a little bit about uh, the skirt. Okay, thanks Dan. Um, this skirt um, was an idea I came up with. Um, in myself, I represent four nations. Um, I'm one part, I'm five parts of Ojibwe, one part of Lakota, one part of Mi'kmaq, one part of French. And so I grew up thinking that I was the only Ojibwe uh, but I found out through the years that I had those other two nations, the Big Ma and Lakota. So I grew up with these um, Ojibwe teachings, and um, a lot of you are familiar with the Seven Grandfathers teachings. And um, these um, seven flowers, uh, seven stars on each side represent the Seven Grandfathers teachings, but they also represent the seven sacred colors that we use in our ceremonies. Uh, when people are going fasting, um, they usually bring seven flags of these colors. And so this represents um, the colors of the lodge. And um, I made it out of red because in, ever since I was a little girl, they always said red was the Indian color. And then um, it also represents the Iroquois nation because it has these double ribbons on each side. And these ribbons represent the, um, the two row wampum. That was one of the first treaties made between the Dutch and the Oneida. And so um, this was a vision I had after Glenn gave us um, the staff part. So uh, I worked on it, and we got these feathers from the Pentagons in the Midwest. His name is Dave uh, Wechar. He sent them from BC. And we had uh, a lot more white ones, but we started giving them, giving them away. So uh, we had to quick and start sewing so we wouldn't be, you know, we'd have, still have some white ones to put on here. So, and uh, I put this on, um, these silver beads, to represent uh, Dan's grandmother. Um, when we got married, I wore some brass beads that she had, and so uh, it was just, um, I don't know, something a little sentimental for me. So, and there's, um, I think there's 17 feathers on here all together. There's 13 on this dress part, and Dan's going to hang the other four up there. So, um, the 13 represent the 13 moons, and the four represent the four colors, the four races, you know, all the representations of four that are very special to us. There's all kinds of uh, representations of force. There's uh, four seasons, there's uh, four chambers of the color, there's uh, the red, red, black, and white, those four colors, and there's uh, four slices of the pie, which, uh, <laughs> which is what I have. <laughs> but to represent my French on your side, I think we have French fries so we can make this one. <laughs> outside of St. Marie, and we found out that we went to the same public school only she was two years older. Wow. And so uh, I always talk about that Catholic school when I talk about my sister Debbie, because uh, my sister Debbie was murdered here in Toronto. And um, I always talk about her and what the police didn't do for her and for us as a family. But when we, we were like in the kindergarten in grade one, we both went there, and the nuns were just so mean. Like, my sister was uh, always getting in trouble. She was always, like, they said, don't talk, she'd make a little creep, right? So um, she was always getting, um, you know, the strap and the ruler, just, and she never would yell or anything. But that just made me shine up my hair, and I was just a perfect student. But um, turns out Maria went to that same school, and she had the same mean nuns. But I don't think she rebelled. No, yeah, they. I was, I was slapped around in kindergarten. Were you? Yes. Oh, you did Yeah, because I cut the three wise men out oh, separately. Oh, yeah. And instead then of because you're left handed? One. And oh, then yeah. because I was left handed, I needed to be right handed. I'm still. Yeah. So I did. Yeah. <laughs> you did. Yeah. And you survived. We did that to my grandfather. And then he ended up getting his right hand cut off. So he had to go back to his left hand. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to start with a prayer and then there's a number of speakers and performers today and I'll introduce them after. Thank you so much for coming everybody. Okay. Do we have a motion, Cabellus, to uh, 
published take this much around? Hey, uh, are you able to? Do you help me? Yep. Uh, anything that's going to prevent the detract us from having to bring our good intentions into the circle today? We want to we want to be left with our good energy, our good hearts, our good mind. So this is our way of doing it. We, we wash our hands in the smoke. What do you see, Mary Lou? A loon in the pond. Oh, he's come to join us. Yeah, he's come to uh, here. The, the words around the oh, circle. That's, really that's really nice. Is that right? So he's listening to you. Yeah. Oh, good. Wow. good. It's probably been a while since they've had uh, some kind of ceremonial observance here. So it's good for them to listen in on what the human, the two legged are sharing with one another over here on this special day. They, they probably don't recognize this as first day. But they understand it's special because it has some significance. Otherwise, it wouldn't be all gathering here, right? So, um, uh, yeah, just wash your hands and salt goes over your, your eyes. You see all the good, the positive, the good quality, the good character. Put over your ears so you hear the good, the nice sharing that's going to be shared today. The teachings, the wisdom, the, um, the music. The drum, the heartbeat of Mother Earth, the songs that we be sharing, put it over our mouths and our throats, and then we speak as our people's heart. Opportunity to share, we share the good things, the good words, those good, uh, that, those good teachings that we've observed for a day like today. And it's, uh, it's always nice when we uh, speak in our language. So I'm just going to take that time now. Now, uh, we're Mississauga people and uh, Seneca people. He also said it here as Rodney Mabawash uh, shared in his, uh, his, his uh, that was a very famous uh, bus tour that he used to offer to the public. But um, we want to bring our good minds and our good intentions for this next little while that we're all going to be here to share. And uh, we, we thank everyone. We welcome everyone to meet again for coming today. I'd just like to say that uh, we want to give thanks and give greetings to this beautiful Wani Sirio, this beautiful day that we've been blessed with to use in a good way. We have uh, all chosen to use this day to to give thanks and give greetings to Earth, Mother Earth, for this day, uh, which is uh, uh, in our language right now, because, because of the time of the season that we're in right now, uh, we, don't, we don't call the Earth Earth, we call it mud. Right now in our in our language, uh, we say uh, which means uh, the mud, mud of the land, because usually in this this time of year it's very much mud. But uh, we want to acknowledge this beautiful life support system, especially around here, here in the ravine, where we have a, a weasel, and we have this loon over here that uh, come to join us. We welcome them to come and participate, as well as some of the birds. You can hear them around us as well. So we give greetings, we give thanks to all the life, all the life that is in the water and on the water, the swimmers, the pinned ones, the, that uh, continue to take care of the water. We give greetings, we give thanks to the water, which is the lifeblood of our mother, the earth, which is also the feminine sacred element of life that all creation needs in order to survive. So you want to acknowledge the water. The water is still doing her sacred work and following her sacred instructions and providing life for all creation, so be it in the You will also want to acknowledge the earth, all the life that is in the earth, all the life that is on the earth, the 
fathers, the four leggeds, the plants, the two leggeds, the medicines, the rocks, the minerals, the trees, all the life that is in the trees, and all the life that is on the trees, the flyers. So they represent another life support system that's interdependent, interconnected, related, that are taking care of our motherly earth. And so we acknowledge that we all have this responsibility to look after our motherly earth because she is giving us all life. She's providing life to all of us. And she does this because she's following her sacred instructions, grandfather, grandmother, so be it to her minds. We give readings and give thanks to our Father Sky. The air, the air is, the Father Sky is the breath of life that he breathes, he continues to breathe into all creation. For he is still following his sacred instructions, grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our minds. We acknowledge our eldest brother, the sun. Our eldest brother is uh, almost right above us right now. And at this time, we don't cast too much of a shadow. Because in that shadow, we can have a hidden agenda. But we always say that when the eldest brother is right above us, that's the best time for us to do our ceremonies. Because we want the Creator to recognize that we have nothing to hide. We want the Creator to witness that we are here, still performing and conducting our ceremonials, ceremonials of Thanksgiving. That protocol is still being observed all across Turtle So while we're gathering here, they are gathering elsewhere in different places across Turtle Island to also give thanks and give greetings to this beautiful one field, this beautiful day, Earth Day. So we acknowledge our eldest brother who represents the sacred element of fire. Fire is that element that provides us with heat and with light. And every day our eldest brother rises in the, in the east and he travels across to the, to the west. And as he does, he shows his face and he provides us with that that, that uh, fire of life, that sacred fire that burns inside of each and every form of life, that connects all of us to each other. We are all related because we all have that sacred fire that connects us. So we acknowledge that the work of the our eldest brother, the son, he is still following his sacred instructions, grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our minds. We acknowledge our grandmother Moon, who's going to be begin showing her face on Friday, Friday, but she's starting to a little bit now. But on Friday her face will be she, her face will be full. And when she does show her face, she is taking care of the all female life and she's taking care of the water. So we acknowledge that the our grandmother moon is still following her sacred instructions. And this moon that's coming up, it's right now we are in the time of the thunder moon because the thunders are here. The thunders, their job is to wake up the earth, shake it up, shake it away, activate it, so that the whole earth is coming alive. And right now we're surrounded by this, this earth energy of new life. And we can feel it in the air. We can see it on the grass. We can see it in these trees. The trees, uh, the buds are starting to push the leaves out on the trees. So we're witnessing all around us the birds, the the, 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 the finwets. It's all happening around us. So it's a sacred time, a very beautiful time. But this next moon, I believe, is called the Sucker Moon, Marilu, yes. because that's the moon that the suckers are the ones that clean that, that clean the bottom of the of the water beds, of all water beds, the, the rivers, the lakes, the uh, the creeks and the streams, because they're cleaning up the they're cleaning up the water because that water is a life support system that needs to be cleaned up, and that's what the suckers do. And they do that to us. They do that to all the life that is in the water and that is on the water. So we we honor and respect and celebrate the, the sucker of fish. So we acknowledge that the, our grandmother moon is still following her sacred instructions, grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our minds. We acknowledge our relatives, the stars, our star relatives, remind us when it is time for us to conduct our ceremonies of Thanksgiving. And in many of our longhouses, our roundhouses, our longhouses, we have just completed the, what we call the, the maple sap ceremony. And we've uh, done, an, we, we awaken the trees and then we put the, sleep, the trees back to sleep. The, the principal tree being the maple, the wata, the enatik tree, which brings forth the first medicine that comes from Mother Earth. And we're, we're, we've been drinking that medicine from the time of its arrival. We're to drink it for one month so that that medicine will fortify our blood with about 57 different elements and minerals, including iron so that we can get ready and start getting ready to prepare the land for the next cycle of creation. So we acknowledge that uh, the next next cycle of creation is going to be, or the next ceremony in our longhouse, in our lodges, and in our roundhouses will be the planting. 
the seed ceremony, and that will be taking place in the next month. So we acknowledge that this time is a, a, another, a very sacred time, that we, uh, this time of the moon, this time of the season, because it's all in rhythm with the cycle of creation. So we acknowledge that grandfather, grandmother, and that our, our relatives, the stars, are reminding us, continuing to remind us to do these ceremonies of Thanksgiving. We also want to acknowledge the thunderers, the thunderers who have been here for the past month, waking up and shaking up creation and letting us know that the next cycle is upon us now. So we can get prepared and get ready to get into the rhythm of the next cycle of creation, grandfather, grandmother, so be it in our minds. And we also acknowledge the four protectors, those four celestial beings who look after all spiritual matters. It is they who have brought each and every one of us who are here as in this circle, this circle here at the Brickworks, Evergreen Brickworks, here in the city of Toronto, here on the traditional territory of the Mississauga people. They've brought us here because we know Diesel, uh, um, the, the creator, the maker of our bodies, the maker of all life, creator of all life, loves each and every one of you so much that she wants us all to be here in each other's good company on this special occasion here on this Earth Day. So in the spirit of our ancestors, we say, Miigwech, Nyawe, Wilalin, Tapwe, Masicho, Haisha Shiyat, Tiem, Telamaya, to all my relations, Anishik, Daneto, Hi Hi. sharing so much knowledge and for opening in such a good way. I, was, uh, I wrote something that I'm going to read, that I have to read because I have such a bad memory. And then um, there are a number of people who wanted to do uh, poems and performances and to speak to their own individual relationships to the land as well. And um, I'm really thankful that we're all here. Like it's an intimate space. But I've heard from the grandmothers that, you know, one prayer, one person speaking um, love into the water can make a difference, right? So even though it's intimate, it's still very powerful. Uh, first, I want to give recognition to the peoples whose territories that we're on. As Elder Dan Smoke said earlier, the Seneca and Mississauga Nations. And I am, um, my name's Tanis, and I'm a Cree Métis. And my father is Danish. Um, my grandmother is a Boucher, and she's from St. Louis, Saskatchewan. And my grandfather is a Monkman, whose family is originally from Peguis, Manitoba. <clears throat> if I speak right into the thing, I get really nervous, so I'm just going to pretend. I'm not here. <laughs> that he's not here. But hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so in speaking about my own context and relationship to the land, as an Indigenous woman, we hold a profound relationship to land and water. The land and water, the sky, the two-legged, four-legged, the plants, rocks, all living things and entities, including the celestial beings, form the structure and the basis of our inherent Indigenous cosmological way of being which has imparted to us the knowledge, the trust, the assurance that the land upon which we hold a responsibility to protect is our mother. This is not a myth. Thank you. Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> she is the living, breathing infrastructure that provides us with the essence of our being. She nourishes us with the basis of our inherent epistemological systems. Through thousands of years of empirical, physical, mental, spiritual observations of particular geographic places and ecosystems, she has imparted to us the knowledge of how to sustain a good way of life. 
In order to sustain this good way of life, we have learned and been taught by such elders as Dan and Mary Lou to respect, honor, and revere, and continually renew her natural laws. Natural laws. Under the great spirit, humanity, the animals, the plants, the minerals, the stones, the winds, the waters, the sky, earth, and moon are all interconnected and dependent upon each other for living a good life. What happens to one energy and life form will affect the other energy and life form. As Indigenous peoples, we've learned the importance of maintaining a sense of reciprocity with all these life forms. And so when you hear us speak of all my relations, it is this reciprocal balanced relationship that we are recognizing. Oh. Relationships that are based upon notions of reciprocity and renewal help us to maintain a harmonious, healthy balance with all of life. For relationships that are built upon giving, balance, and reciprocity are healthy, as there is always a sustained sense of sharing amongst the communities in our relations. This sense of reciprocity ensures that everyone, everything, benefits all the time. It also sustains the health of our environments and ecosystems. To sustain the health of the land and ecosystem is to sustain the health of the mother. In honoring and protecting the land, we are honoring and protecting our mother, our women, and safeguarding our interconnectedness with the sacredness of all living things. We have all gathered here today with the recognition that we are all related to the earth. We are all the earth's descendants. We all feel the need to protect our mother, whether we are indigenous to this specific location or not. We know the importance of maintaining her health. In this struggle, we are related. We need to work together in order to ensure our Mother Earth's protection. The late Edward Said once said that the task at hand was for the individual, quote, to universalize the crisis, to give greater human scope to what a particular race or nation suffered, and to associate that experience with the suffering of others, end of quote. If the land and water is sickened, we will all suffer. This is why the Isle of No More Indigenous Rights Movement is so important and vital to all, because Indigenous peoples are the Earth's protectors. If you are concerned about the environment, then you also need to protect the rights of the peoples who are for fighting to protect the rights of the planet. Um, I'm going to end this with a quote from my friend, a scholar who has recently passed away. His name was Rodney Bobbywash who said at the Encounter for Humanity and Against Neoliberalism in Belém in Brazil in December 1999, he said, um, Aboriginal people called for a radical re-examination of the way in which societies and states live. And this call began with a plea that the non-native people there might go into the hearts of their cities and standing there in the wilderness of those urban deserts, water the parched streets of humanity with their tears, that they would weep for the tens of millions of our ancestors buried beneath the pavement and concrete, that they weep for the earth that's been despoiled by daily living and that they weep for their brothers and sisters who are going without bread and finally that they weep for themselves and then having those tears wash away the scales of willful ignorance from their eyes so that they can join us in the redemption of the earth in the salvation of humankind and in the reclamation of history end of quote um and I feel so very grateful for people who are here because I feel we've answered that call that Rodney Bobby Wash put forth. So much much to everybody for coming. Oh. <coughs> um, this no. is a woman who I respect so much. Sikur Blue has really dedicated her life to protecting the environment. I honor you so much. You're amazing. The work that you've done for everybody. Um, that it's not only to live in line with natural law, to only take what we need, but it's also to resist. And 
I think we should resist in a good way, which is why for the past six years, um, I've been working with communities that have been directly impacted, um, particularly by the Canadian mining industry, such that uh, I do so in a good way with consciousness that I'm not going to negatively impact the people that I'm trying to help, <laughs> um, which is important. And there's many ways that you can do this, end up doing that. Um, and I came to speak about um, opportunities that exist within Toronto um, to engage in these struggles. And as Tanis has said, something that's kind of become a mantra for me is standing with the people who are standing up for the earth. And we have an incredible opportunity right now um, to fight one of uh, the biggest monstrosities in Canada right now, which is the Canadian tar sands. Um, you know, it's, it's a version of extreme oil, um, the sign of the impacts of our oil addiction. And there's lessons to be learned from the tar sands that we just aren't learning. Um, and that is the Line 9 pipeline that's going to be coming through northern Toronto. It goes right through Gaines Bend, right next to uh, this very populated area. And it's an incredibly uh, dangerous pipeline. Um, so it's being imposed on us um, where the National Energy Board is very much discouraging any sort of public engagement in this process. Um, but it also um, has a huge threat to our waterways. Um, a spill is very likely because the pipeline itself is 37 years old and is almost identical to the pipeline that spilled in Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. And so that is a struggle that, you know, is, is our front in the tar sands battle. And is also an incredible opportunity for unifying, much like Harper unified so many people in this country uh, against his arrogant policies. I feel like this very obvious threat um, is an opportunity to unify us against the tar sands locally. Um, another front is the fact that Toronto itself is the belly of the beast in the global mining industry. And so I've been working with communities around the world that are impacted by um, mining companies that are financed through the Toronto Stock Exchange who are headquartered in Toronto. And there's three annual general meetings of these companies that are coming up in the next two weeks or three weeks. Uh, one is this Wednesday, and it's the world's largest gold mining company. The next is on May 2nd, and it's the world's second largest gold mining company. And, you know, gold in particular has something that I've thought had incredible spiritual significance uh, to the battle against it, and it's because it's a luxury product. We don't need gold. We don't need to mine gold. In fact, we already have mined all sorts of gold that we don't need. <laughs> so even for the useless um, uses of gold, we can just use recycled gold for that um, into perpetuity. Um, and yet we are destroying the last unpolluted valleys of northern Chile. Um, we are destroying pristine areas, largely of indigenous people around the world. Over 50% of the gold mining is done on native land and over 70% something that you know makes me realize the truth and in all these prophecies you know around native people um, resurging and shifting the paradigm around what it is to live um, with mother earth uh, but you know those those are the stats uh, behind that and so this wednesday at 9 30 a.m uh, we're going to be protesting the shareholders meeting of barrett gold uh, comes at a great time because their sharehold their share price is actually down 50 percent because the regulators in chile were like uh we were actually very serious about the environmental obligations that we forced you to sign on to barrett didn't take it seriously and so they've had their construction uh, shut down at that mine site and their stock has plummeted plummeted uh 30 percent in the last month 50 percent in the last year so it's a great time to stand up with them. Uh, Gold Core, of course, um, they're impact impacting several communities, including in Canada. Um, and you know, one of the big things that just happened was there was a consulta or a referendum in Guatemala uh, by a, a mine that's owned by Tahoe Resources and Gold Core. And on the way back from this referendum, four of the leaders were kidnapped and one was killed. Um, 
2010. This is in a Mayan community in a country, Guatemala, that is currently being um, run by an ex-general during the genocide. So it's a very, very important time to stand with those communities and to show that we are conscious of what's going on. That's our role in uh, this convoluted system we are in, is to breathe that consciousness so that people are aware of the impacts of their actions. And, um, and yeah, we just have an incredible opportunity being here where these boards of directors meet. And then of course, HUD Bay is meeting on May 10th and, and we're talking to communities in Northern Manitoba who um, HUD Bay is suing um, Chief Arlen um, and um, the free community in, in Northern Manitoba. And so it's another opportunity to stand with them as well. And I know it can seem uh, very overwhelming but um, I find protests to be very energizing. Um, and, you know, I think that the conscious, the increased consciousness around mining in general is meaning that they can't get away with their abuses like they're used to. And this is reflected in Barrick's share price. And, you know, even though um, I haven't destroyed any of these companies yet, as is, <laughs> you know, an ultimate goal, um, you know, I have seen an increase in the number of successes. And sometimes when you get more successful, it means that you're going to be repressed more. So the sad story is that these communities were, this, these leaders were kidnapped and one was killed on a way back from a referendum. But the other side of that is they had a referendum where they collectively asserted their sovereignty over their territory and said no collectively in a way that can't be undermined by the mining company. And so we got to take these things um, as they come, you know, the repression will come with the successes um, and stand with them and do what we can to stand with people standing up for the land. So uh, thank you so much for listening to these messages. And um, I have flyers and we have a lot of events because, you know, it's not just about protesting. It's also about educational events and things like that. Um, and then we're planning a nice dinner as well. And um, I would welcome you to come. I don't know if you know, uh, you know any drummers that might be interested in drumming at any of, of these events, but I think that um, the Idle No More presence, it's, it's such a powerful movement and such a powerful um, idea. I've always said I was actually happy that uh, the settler population didn't get it together to um, have an effective movement against Harper because it just worked out way better the way it all played out. So, um, thank you very much. You're an important part of Idle No More. Like, we're all Idle No More, right? Yeah. Definitely. Been with it since the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it, it's no surprise that they want that pipeline to go through Jane and Finch either. Okay. Yeah. Hmm? The pipeline's already there. Oh. Um, it's a thirty. It's like a thirty-year-old pipeline oh. that was built a long time ago, mainly to transport uh, oil eastwards towards Sarnia. Uh, they want to reverse the flow and bring tar sands through it, which is a total disaster plan. It, it just happened. The spill in Arkansas. When I saw the images, I was like, wow, this is an image of Toronto's possible future because it was also an old pipeline that was reversed in order to carry tar sands crude. And, you know, as, as you saw the photographs of the suburban neighborhoods with the oil flowing right through it. Um, and, you know, the thing about bitumen is that it's not oil. And so they have to add all these chemicals to it in order to make it move through the pipelines. and. Uh, those chemicals are extremely dangerous to your health. Um, they turn into a gas if there's a rupture. And people within 50 kilometers of the Kalamazoo spill were reporting smelling the gas. And within two um, miles, this was in the U.S., these miles, uh, they were reporting uh, much more extreme symptoms, which I don't want to get into <laughs> graphically describe. We have so little knowledge. I had no idea that that pipeline was already there, right? So mm -hmm. disseminating that information is so important. We hope to have you come for a teach-in. I we would get those. love to. Just tell me when and I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Kalamazoo is line six. Huh. Same network. Thank you for sharing.
uh, we can tag you and be your friend on Facebook. <laughs> Secure okay. Blue, everybody. Access more information. Show up in solidarity and support. Yeah. Dia, did you want to share? Song? Yeah. Mama D has a lot of really awesome music and, and uh, powerful voice for the environment. And you're a lawyer, too, right? I was a lawyer, and I was teaching the transition program when Bobby started, uh, Rodney oh, started. Wow. He was one of my students. I got out of the academic camp. It made me nuts. <laughs> you survived. You were so blessed to not be alone at the so-called academy. Because it was me and my friend Brenda Small. Yeah, yeah, we were in law school. Yeah. That was like, there was a big absence of us. Nations House was, uh, I have this tobacco, it's going to be hard to play with tobacco in the moment. Would you move to focus? It was a little house on Wilcox Avenue. And it was a residential space for seven, eight students. One must have your soapbox to say. Really? <laughs> So, I left the law because in the law they want you to be in your head. And of course, you go to the courts. You're dealing with people that are where they are as judges because they are in their heads. You have to be in your head to live in that world. It's so very hard not to lose yourself. And I was, I did go through long enough ago that Trish Montchur was a mentor to me and a friend to me. And she kept a path. She made a path. And we were, yeah, I don't know what I would have done without her. And I miss her very much. I have a picture on my wall with little bundles and I do ceremonies. I have to take the teeth out that aren't mine. This is a song about accusation and reparation. Have a bloody beach a burning tree the boats have landed but the line from the ship to the shores in our command now. To the peacemakers, healers, the lovers, the dreamers before us. Your words were strong, they carried us on. What can we make of this? You have smiled as you've recounted your great victories. You have sung your many anthems without their harmony. You have cried to your mother's mother and still you let it be. You would turn on your own 
husbands to write your history. And on the evidence you're implicated. And on the evidence we have paid some price. And on the evidence you've been found guilty and in your own words. There's been a push in the many souls into oblivion. We have been offered in return an earless Babylon. A textbook heaven we can't touch, for eyes cut down with pain. Not wipe away. It is your piece stolen now by ghosts that lie in wait. For I had to, for all the grief, for all your bloody trail. Till now your breath, like a wicked storm, blows itself across the scale. And on the Celebration combined. This is my friend Michelle over there. Did you get spiced here? I thought my friend and I chose him. I said, I thought my young friend Nigel would have come to you. Thank you. Can do it Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have this. Uh, I was a little girl around eight or nine years old. I heard that the earth was eventually going to be sucked into the sun. To go home to the fires where she came from. Ah. Well, 
well, that doesn't really matter then what we do here, does it? I, I was trying to think. I mean, I was an eight-year-old nihilist. Uh, and uh, then I thought to myself, I said, well, what we're here for, though, is that we don't have to do that. The sun doesn't really want to eat us. What the Great Spirit gave us was this ability to speak to each other. What we're supposed to do while we're on this planet, amongst sharing and living in balance, is we're supposed to sing. This is what my idea was when I was eight. That if we all could, every creature on the planet could sing in harmony, we would create a beat. And that beat would pulse us out of the gravity of the sun. So that's what our purpose is, to sing our way out of the sun. And so that's the, that's the, that's the dream I wanted to share with you. Because I think it's possible. And one of the things we have to do is take back Concert A. If any musicians here? Concert A, this is, this is A, right? 440. Actually, concert A used to be 432, because that's the frequency of carbon, most of the Earth. And in 1936, Joseph Goebbels, Hitler's minister of spin, changed by law and declared that 440 would now be concert A. Now, if you imagine 432 being ready to resonate all over, and it's got this really calming, grounding vibration frequency. Imagine, we've been living since 1936, with everything sort of sped up a little bit. So let's bring it back to 432. I will be recording everything I do from now on at 432. Damn the piano players and the accordions. <laughs> But I think it's uh, it's something we should start thinking about is 432. Magic numbers. Well, it makes perfect sense because like our elders have been saying everything is animated, right? You know, the grandfathers, like even this guitar case comes from natural materials. And then when you look at string theory, they're saying how everything is animated, right? And on yeah. a particular harmonious level, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, so that makes sense. Everything will start going like this. But we're at 440. We have all these poor children have listened to 440 all their lives, and their 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 systems, their their heartbeats, the way their atoms vibrate, everything is it's been sped up. They're a little. It's, it's like it's crazy making, literally crazy yeah. making. Anyway, so that's what I wanted to share. Wow, such a beautiful sharing. Thank you so much. Woo. Thank you for being here. Thank you. You're all so beautiful. <laughs> Would anybody else like to share their thoughts, feelings, songs, stories? About their we were going to have a clown performance. Michelle was going to come. <laughs> that would have been good. Where are you, Michelle? She's here. She's here somewhere. Hey, is she? There she is. Oh. <laughs> when you were singing, the loon was going like this to the beat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, for those of you who received tobacco, and you, have, you still have it, okay, just hold on to it. Okay, wherever you're going to go, wherever you're going to find uh, a place that to you, uh, you're connected, you feel connected to, or just a place to, to clean, clean up, or if you want to go to the water, or if you want to go to the earth. We have uh, uh, four ways of observing that we have a relationship with the earth. Okay, you're here to recognize the earth. So the tobacco is our is our first was the first medicine that we were given. In uh, in my language, you say uh, uh Mary Lou's language, they say sema sema, which uh, in my language means leaf of the creator. And in the creation in our creation story, the sky woman came down from the sky world, and in her left hand she had the seeds for tobacco. So. Uh, right now, there's this real resurgence and re reclamation of people growing their own tobacco, because that's the original DNA of the tobacco that were, that came when the Sky Woman brought it to us in our creation story. Uh, today's tobacco that you buy in a store, it's still tobacco. It still has, as Art Solomon used to say, tobacco is tobacco is tobacco. So. Uh, all you have to do is, if you get tobacco, then take it and smudge it, and it's it's tobacco. Smudge it, purify it, and you can still use it as tobacco. Now, the way we have been taught uh, to ask for help and to give thanks with our tobacco is to hold it in our left hand, like everyone has has been doing, and you take that. And you can go to the you can go to the earth anywhere we're on the earth and just sprinkle it on the earth, and you can ask for help, or you can give thanks. That's, that's your opportunity, that's your protocol that you're observing of asking for help and giving thanks. So today's a good day to do it to the earth. Uh, you can also go to the water. Water also represents life. So you can go to the water and you can offer it to the water. Any body of water. You can even offer it to that, that puddle over there. That, that'll work. Because water represents life. And life is all around us. This is the life support system. <coughs> So the tobacco will connect you, and you can ask that water for help. You can give thanks to that water for whatever it is that you want to give thanks or ask for help for. Or you can take it, and you can put it into a sacred fire. Uh, we Just imagine that we have a virtual sacred fire that Tannis has uh, struck up for us. And uh, you know that you can take it to that sacred fire, and you can offer it into that sacred fire. Uh, whenever you see a sacred fire, be it at a conference, a gathering, a powwow, you should always go to the sacred fire and, and greet it. Give it, you know, just acknowledge that you're you're coming to uh, take part in the, in the activity. You're coming to witness it. You're coming to be a participant, or you're coming to observe. But that you want to give greetings and you want to give thanks for the sacred fire that's there. It's usually attended to by a uh, fire keeper, whose job, whose responsibility is to make sure that nothing goes into the sacred fire, except prayers and medicine. That's the only thing that's allowed in the fire, a sacred fire, just prayers and medicine. You can't throw any uh, cigarette butts or anything like that in, no Tim Hortons cups, nothing like that. So they'll be there to make sure that, that so that's, the, that's how you observe the sacred fire. And there will be medicines there. There usually are medicines there that uh, you can use to offer into the sacred fire. So that's a good uh, protocol and observance that you'll see most any native uh, gathering that you go to. And then the last way that we've been told that to ask for help and give thanks is to put it, the tobacco into a prayer pipe, a grandmother prayer pipe or a grandfather prayer pipe, and, uh, and smoke it. And then, because that prayer pipe, they say, it's like an arrow. You have a wooden shaft, wooden stem of the arrow, and you have a stone bowl, a stone arrowhead of, the, of, of, a, of an arrow. And when you smoke it, it's like you're sending your prayers, your requests, your thanks, your gratitude directly to the source like you would an arrow and it goes fast. So that's why we use the pipe because the pipe gets our, well the pipe is really, it's, it's for pipe people. There, most of us are pipe people. Most of us have attended pipe ceremonies. So we know that when we sit around in a circle for a pipe ceremony, we're all praying in, in the sun. Uh, the service features of the same thing. But today, today's is a great day. So that's
that's what you can do with your tobacco. You can take it wherever you're going to be going and just make an offering, make it, you know, for yourself. You say it out loud, but the, the spirits already know why, why you're here and what you're, what you're giving thanks for and what you're asking for help for. So I just wanted to say that because uh, some of you, uh, I'm sure most of you know the protocol around tobacco, but I'm just reiterating it. That's, that's another uh, something that I was told to do whenever, whenever I'm standing with the Eagle staff, uh, always acknowledge some of these protocols. So I want to thank uh, my grandmother for that beautiful song. And that uh, I didn't know your history was. You have a history going with, going back with Patricia Montour. Patricia Trish was uh, was a dear friend of ours. We live in London too. Oh yeah. And that's where she. People don't know this, but her uncle and her grandfather were the bishops of the Huron Diocese of the Anglican Church. So it's no wonder she grew up to be the way she was, right? She had all that church influence. But she was very she was very respectful of the church because she grew up uh, with that respect. And uh, so she was always respectful of all, of all faiths, all cultures. And that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, she was a very, very dear friend of ours as well. And I want to thank you, uh, Tennis, for that manifesto. Yeah, I don't know more. Right on. Good words. Good words. So I'm going to turn it back over to you. Yeah. Well, it was going to end. Uh, we're ending early. But yeah, sir. Hello. Oh. And interestingly enough, it's in the key of A. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's an old hall, and it's inscribed with the Om Mani Padme Mantra of the Mahayana tradition. Uh, <clears throat> actually, it's fun. It's much to be interesting in the wooden tradition. So, if I may offer the sound of A from the mountain. is the Puckish preacher. Uh, my Salagi name is Wahali. I carry responsibility as Ashkapevus Royal in the Maikiche tradition.
you for welcoming us. Does anybody else like to share? Yes, sir. Nigado, Pali Iriga, Askaya Kulunati, O Sita, Anihun Pipo, Aho, Aho. With great joy, we are ever grateful for this gift of life. I have a story I'd like to share. Yes. <laughs> Another story. It's an Art Solomon and Vern Harper and story, and it's from 1972, 73. Um, I told Vern and Art this story I heard about tobacco. And they said, oh. They said, where did you hear that? And I said, they made it up. <laughs> and they said, that's okay. That's a traditional story. Now. <laughs> but it's about tobacco being everything that you said, my brother, my elder. It's also that tobacco is our grandfather, the humbler. And years and years and years ago, when there was problems, we would all sit around and we take a draw on this really potent tobacco. And by the time it got around the circle, everybody had been reminded of their mortality and their, their being on the earth, uh, only for in that form for a while, in the, the humility of it. And over the years, we got more problems and more problems. <clears throat> The pipe got shorter and the backhoe got changed. And we're at a time now to turn it back because our good medicine turned bad. The pipe became, became bad medicine. Now we have to take it back. So Art said I can tell that story. So thank you for letting me share it.
I tried to post it on my Facebook to try to get more people around, but I think it's really short notice. So. I think the, the last thing that we did was in June. So we needed to recover a little bit. Are you able to go to those events? I'm going to be pledged. Were you able to go to those events? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to the last event I went to the individual. Oh, yeah. So you get a good percentage of time. Yeah, I'm pretty busy. Yeah, I think they do that. I have a speech today, so we're busy. They do. So I definitely want to keep updated on a lot of different things. So. And then, like, with much more notice. Yeah, definitely. I like that. Thanks for coming. No problem. You too. Because it's a good way of living. Do you guys want to come over? I don't know. Do you have a lot of time? That's pretty amazing. We are back to my handshake. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of bricks for over a hundred years. And now it's a nature reserve, for lack of a better thing. Name. So, description of where we're at. We're at Evergreen Brickworks. People in Toronto know this. 555 Bayview. Super downtown Toronto. Just off the Down Valley Parkway. Very next to the uh, Dam Forest. By the Main arteries up and down. Toronto. You're welcome. Yar. Do you have a new album with your sister? Yeah, Can my new the... copy on, on camera. I actually have a reason for it not being on right now. Okay. Yeah, 
Okay, sounds good. Your t-shirt, that's a great item on our t-shirt. So how much, um, how much yeah. do you want to give me? Because I'm not, yes. I'm selling them, but I'm not selling them because of so I give you the CD. <laughs> oh, I love that. Like that's when you see it when you see like full grown mature hawks. They're out there standing there and they're bothered by all these things. So it's just a it's like like a territorial continent, you everything, you know, and uh, the funny things is happened, but because when we, my daughter and me just we came to the wrong house, not knowing anyone, like <laughs> that's the country, in the middle of the winter, cold, uh, both of us didn't speak English, she was a teenager, you know, mothers <laughs> in this country, in this world, <laughs> like two girls <laughs> landing in the middle of Toronto. Uh, in the middle of the winter, and um, very, very, very special. Um, then I met some people, and um, uh, for some reason, some of my friends went to Six Nation territory oh, yeah. uh, to buy the cigarette. Yes, and yes. I was going with him, you know, and uh, and he went to some store, Apple oh, computer yeah. they were selling, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Mary Lou? Oh, I'm sorry, you, you don't have time. No, 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 no. She's, uh, she's taking some medicine over to Mary Lou. And, yeah, Six Nations, yes. Yeah. Apple computers, yes. Yes, and then we went to the store and it was like a display of some um, a stone, someone made the turtles. For oh, the uh, carvings. Yes. And, yeah, that is like a 10, 20, probably. Looking, looking around. And one, because I back home, I always have some kind of the connection with the turtle. I don't know anything about, yeah. about your culture. Nothing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, like a, uh, I, I had, but not like a meaning of the turtle. And I, I saw one and I just connected with it. And uh, it was for sale. You know, and I was asking how much. And the lady told me it's $50. And it was not really a lot, you know, but I was just new. I was okay, no, 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 I can't afford any kind of luxury. And I didn't buy. And for two years, I couldn't stop thinking about the person. For two years, it just stayed in my head. And after two years, the same, right? Um, after two years, it just stayed in my head. And uh, he was like a couple of other guys. 
very did the copy. It's just like, like it's so close to the, to the, to the, to the ground. Oh, yeah. I didn't talk about it. And, uh, and then is the counter, you know, and I was in control. Because I was, you know, you just come with your mind, you just focus on something to find, two years, like, and I on the counter, and I saw my turtle. Mm -hmm. And I, some lady was there, there, there. I asked, you know, so many uh, that turtle is for sale, you know. And she looked at me, like straight in my eyes, and told me, you can have it. Really? And I told her, you know, I know what that means, but still my English is not so good. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I didn't feel really comfortable to repeat my question because I knew really the meaning, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's rude actually to again to ask, but in the same time I was thinking, I'm supposed, I'm not supposed to go out of the store, you know, without paying that. Yeah. And I, I, I repeat my question. And she looked at me the same things like straight in my face. I told you, you can have it. And I got my turtle. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like a few years later, my daughter went to the uh, Lake of the Woods. Yes. Kenora? Uh, yeah, that's a um, uh, rainy river. Yeah, rainy river. Yeah, yeah it's up there. Uh, Port Francis. Yeah, that's close. Yeah. And she was summer camp. <laughs> Taking children. English, like you know, <laughs> and uh, by the end of her work there, um, she got a legal feather, and that's how I actually, you know, <laughs> get involved. <laughs> very, very, very funny. That's a lot of other things. You know. The last year, some same bird was I really don't know I left that bird, big bird, red tail fox, had something to do with me. Because last year I didn't know what is that, you know. Mm -hmm. That bird showed me the way. I was I needed my time in the in the nature and somewhere close to the um Guelph. I went with my friend and uh, okay. I told him, Okay, now I'm gonna walk there, you know, and uh, um and uh, like give me two hours and we're gonna meet there because I really, really love to walk and then just it can show again, you know. <laughs> and I decided to follow. And I thought that it's like a point of a spirit, like a no, 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 I don't know that maybe some dead body, but I don't know, it's not the, um, the bird who is eating the, the dead, that's pretty, she's, you know, the bird, the, the hawk is, is, is hunting, he's not going to eat something what is already done, because I don't know, it's scared, you can do it. Very strange for me. Very, very, very strange. The energy was very strange. Very different. I never, never, never feel that kind of energy. I took the picture of that, and when I came home, then it's figuring out what. It's actually the sweat lodge. Oh yeah, there's a lodge on the Saint Ignatius uh, Jesuit uh, community land. Yeah, there is a sweat right there, yeah. I don't know. If, you know, I was yeah, like yeah. walking, That's but then it's yeah. a little mm -hmm. creek, yeah. and the Daniel little little creek, yeah. 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 That's, in fact, it's Vern Harper's. And now, Vern Harper's sweat, yeah. And That's his that, camp. That's his camp. And that bird, yeah. because I was following that bird, you know, the yeah. Action, yeah. actually came to that place, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was very, very, very strange. Mm -hmm. Well, no, they, they don't recognize that this nice sacred, sacred area. A lot of ceremonies are done there. Yeah, and it's funny. I mean, I like a, something. Yeah. Uh, for sure, <laughs> it's uh, for some reason. Yeah. I'm supposed to be around, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I always thought that 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 turtle was signed for me, um, uh, like a like a welcome to the country. I always thought something like that. Well, it's Turtle Island. Yeah, yeah. Turtle Island. Turtle Island. Yeah. You've heard about that, eh? The migration yes, story. Okay, good. Later good. on, I told about. Okay. Take care. But, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, what's your name? And you're from Bosnia, right? Yeah. And what's your name again? It's Anya. Anya. 
And I will give those oh, photographs uh, to Davine and Kathy. Say hi to Davine. Yes. And tell, tell him that uh, uh, take care of those photos. Yes. His son is going to need them one day. Yes. They were from last July. There was yeah, a, right. a rally at Queen's Park for right. decolonization. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Yeah. Quick, quick, final make sure the brick works and then we're done. Happy Earth Day. Every day should be Earth Day, folks. Yar. This is where the farmer's market is every Saturday. 8 to 1 o'clock. For those of you who live in Toronto, this is where it is. It's really easy. You can get here. It's a free shuttle from Broadview Subway Station um, and a bus from Davisville. And uh, it's the Brickworks, Evergreen Brickworks, no longer making bricks. It was idle for a while. And of late, it became this great entity. This is just a, a fraction of it. There's so many other parts to it, but I'm going to leave you with some of that. And uh, my name is D. Shanger. I'm a mod and live stream director, and I was directing this part of the feed. And uh, yar yar and yar yar. Have fun, folks, and uh, we'll see you. Uh, Tomorrow night for the I Don't Know More teaching uh, around 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then Wednesday morning with the Barracks Gold protest starting at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, and then there's the Beans First Nation show. The wind. The Beans First Nation show on uh, Thursday night. Then we got movie night Friday. And then my weekly master class on how to live stream. Uh... As we live streamers don't say bye, we say peace out and see you on the live chat. Ciao, folks.